In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a calendar like this in Excel that can automatically update based on the month name that you enter. It'll allow you to track holidays and special events and highlight the current day that you're on. So I'm going to clear this out and start from scratch. I'm going to start by entering the current, current month and spreading this across seven columns, one for each day of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And what I'm going to do is start with creating two named ranges, one for the start date and one for the end date. And for the start date, I'm going to use the date value formula. And what this allows me to do is just enter a text and Excel will convert that into a date value. So I could just type in November 1, 2021 but I want to make it a bit more dynamic than that. I'm going to grab the month name, use the ampersand, and the spacing here is important so it reads it properly. So I put a space, the number one, comma, another space, ampersand. And you could hard code the year, but if you want it to pull the current year, what you could use is the year function, and inside that, the today function. Close that out. And now if I change this to short date, you'll see that it pulls in November 1st, which is the start of the month. If I want to pull the last day of the month, I'll use the EO month function. And I'll select my start date as November 1st. And my second argument for the month is going to be zero because I do not want it moving any months forward or backward. I just want the end of the current month. Close that out. And again, use the format painter here to put that in the right format and you can see it says November 30th. So my start date and my end date values mm -hmm. are correct. What I'm going to do now is populate the day numbers. To do this, what I'm going to do is start by numbering the, the different days of the week. So the first day of the week on, on my regional settings it is a Sunday and two is a, a Monday and so on. And if you're not sure what uh, what your default settings are, you can use the weekday function. So November 1st started on a Monday, and so that returns a value of a two. So Monday is a value of two. So that's how you can check what your, what your default values are. And so I'm gonna use a, a formula here to say, okay, if the weekday value of my, of the start date is equal to this, then this cell should be the start date. Otherwise, it'll be blank. So if I copy this formula over, Monday will populate because the, the weekday relates to Monday. I'm also going to add to this formula to say, okay, if this value is blank, that's when I want to run it. Otherwise, I know that there's a value in there and then I want to do just increment it by one. So now I can copy this formula across. And now if I hit control one to go to format cells, I can go in the custom setting, change this to a D just to get the day number. I'm gonna hit okay. And now I've got the, the day of the month. I'm gonna shrink this down to a size eight font, put this in the, the top left corner just so it's tucked away there. And I don't need these values anymore, so I can hide this. Same with these values. I can hide this right away. And what I'm gonna do is in the in the row below, I'm gonna change the row height to 40 just because I wanna leave some space in case there's, uh, in case again, there's, there's, there's special dates on a track, holiday or, or whatever else. And what I'm gonna do is add some formatting at this point to each one of these borders. Same thing up top and up here. And obviously this is dependent on how you want your your calendar to show up. This one I might use a dark, dark gray just to sort of differentiate. And I'll change this column width to size 20 for all this just so it's a bit more spaced out and there's a bit more room. And what I'm going to do is copy this formatting down just few more a few more rows here 
and change these row heights to 40 just so I can def differentiate. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. I'll add another, another set just to make sure for those months that uh, start on a, on, a, on a Saturday or a Friday that can go potentially into this into this last week here. So I'm going to adjust these formulas here because I'm no longer looking at the at the start of the month. And since every month is going to have at least four weeks, I can just do a simple plus one to to the previous values and copy this across. Copy these formulas down. And so I know the first four weeks are going to be fine. Once I get into here, oh, once I get into this row, now I want to make sure that um, you know I've got enough uh, that I, I don't go past the end of the month. So what I can do is say, okay, if this value plus one is greater than my end date, then it's going to be blank. Otherwise, it's going to be G10 plus one. And same thing over here, I'm going to say, okay, if this plus one is greater than the end date, then it's a blank. Otherwise, a 12 plus one. And I'm going to add a little clause here to say, okay, if this is already blank, then this should also be blank. Okay, set this to blank. Oops. Oops, and then close this out. Okay, and then what I can do is copy this across, and now you can see it clears off. I'll copy this down again. Now, in this case, I need to adjust this one because that previous row was already past the month end. So close this out. And now I've got my values all in there. So what I can do now is I can adjust these different months and say, okay, let's say I want to look at October. You know, that one goes into the 31st into that following week. For a short month like February, you know, it still cuts off at the appropriate section. So now this brings me to, to the next part of this video, and I'm going to go over adding important dates. So for here, I'm going to call this tab the calendar tab. And this one is going to be my important dates. So I'll put in my, my date here and then my value in here. So in my previous example, I had Remembrance Day and Veterans Day marked off for November 11th. And so what I can do here is type in that value for the date, November 11th. And for the value, I can type in, you know, Remembrance Day. And to pull in this value, all I'm really doing is at this point an index and match function. So index, because I'm pulling in the value from column B, using the match function to say, I'm looking up this value in this range, match type is zero column number is one. And the one thing I'm gonna do is add an if error at the start, just in case there's nothing, because there could be days where there's there's nothing there or nothing important to, to mark. Now, if I wanna put in multiple values, the, the easy way to do this is if I just go into here and type Alt Enter, type in, let's say, Veterans Day as well. and wrap text here and then I can center this just so it uh, easily aligns and so now that I've got that formula set up what I can do is freeze these cells and then copy this formula across and onto the other rows and so now if I go back to my important dates and let's say I've got an Excel test for November 15th Type an Excel test, go in here, and sure enough, it shows up. And let's say my Excel test gets moved to December 15th. Go back to the calendar. Now it's no longer there. You can change it to December, and now you'll see it automatically updates. So let's go back to November. 
And what I'm going to do now is show you how you can set up some conditional formatting for this. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is first select the current range that I'm on because I'm going to show you that we're going to have to set up some, some different rules uh, on, on different rows. So for the new rule, I'm going to use a formula and say, okay, so anytime you're using conditional formatting and it's using a formula, you want to pay attention to the first cell you're in, so A6. So let's say A6 is equal to today. If it is, then I want to highlight it in yellow. Hit OK. You can see it works. Now, I want this entire block to be highlighted. So what I'm going to do is adjust that formula and freeze that row. Six. Hit Apply. And now it's got everything highlighted. Now, with this, what I'm going to need to do is adjust these conditional formatting rules just so they uh, apply. Because if I were to copy these formulas and they're always th this formatting, it's always going to reference row six, which is not what I wanted to do. So what I could do is use the Format Painter, copy this over here, and you can see the problem is it's highlighting that because it's looking at row six, and I don't want to do that. So I go back to manage rules. For this particular range, I'm going to change from 6 to row 8, just so that it's looking at row 8 this time. And again, use the Format Painter, copy it down, conditional formatting, edit the rules, and this time it's going to be row 10. Hit OK, apply, and adjust those rules again. So now it looks at row 12, hit apply. And again, changing those. And although this may be a bit of a tedious process, I mean, you only have to do it one time, assuming your calendar always stays um, in the same format. Conditional formatting, manage rules, and this time change it to row four. And so you can apply similar rules if there's certain values that you want to track or certain dates. But this is how you know you can track um, how you can populate a calendar easily, pull in dates, and how you can also apply conditional formatting. So hope you found this video useful, and uh, thank you for watching.